When autumn arrives, it brings a beautiful shower of colorful leaves. Many people see this as a chore. They rake them, bag them, and sometimes even burn them. But I see something else entirely. I see a treasure trove of goodness for the garden. These leaves are not waste. They are a gift from nature. They hold precious carbon and minerals that your soil is hungry for. To throw them away is like throwing away free food for your plants. We must change how we see these fallen leaves. They are not a problem to be solved, but a wonderful resource to be used. They are the start of something magical-rich, dark compost. So why don't these leaves just turn into soil on their own? If you've ever made a pile of dry leaves, you might have noticed it stays there for a very long time, sometimes for more than a year. The reason is quite simple. For decomposition to happen, tiny living things called microbes need three key ingredients. They need moisture, which dry leaves lack. They need nitrogen, which is their food. And they need the microbes themselves to start the work. Dry leaves are mostly carbon, with very little nitrogen. Without water and a healthy population of microbes, the leaves will just sit there, dry and unchanging, waiting for the right conditions to begin their transformation. This is where we as gardeners can step in and become conductors of this natural orchestra. We can provide what is missing. Instead of waiting for nature to slowly do the job over many seasons, we can speed up the process dramatically. By adding the right things, we can turn a pile of brittle dry leaves into beautiful crumbly compost in a matter of weeks, not years. This isn't about using harsh chemicals or complicated machinery. It is about understanding what nature needs and giving it a helping hand. It's a simple, gentle process that works with the natural world, not against it. Think of it this way. Your pile of dry leaves is like a pantry full of dry pasta. The pasta is good food, but you can't eat it as it is. You need to add water and heat to make it a meal. In the same way, your leaves are full of potential, but they need moisture and a spark of life to become a feast for your soil. The good news is that providing these missing elements is incredibly easy and costs almost nothing. You already have everything you need right in your home and garden. It is a wonderful way to connect with the cycles of nature and create something valuable from what was once considered rubbish. The secret to jump-starting the composting process is wonderfully simple. Add a living liquid. What is a living liquid? It is any water that is full of beneficial microbes. One of the best and easiest sources is the water you use to wash rice. Every time you rinse rice before cooking, you're washing away starch and, more importantly, a whole host of microorganisms that live on the grains. This cloudy water is teeming with life. Pouring it onto your dry leaf pile is like sending in a tiny army of workers. These microbes immediately get to work, starting the process of breaking down the tough carbon in the leaves. Making and using rice wash could not be easier. When you prepare rice for a meal, simply place the grains in a bowl and cover them with water. Swirl the rice around with your hands for about a minute. The water will turn a milky, cloudy white. Instead of pouring this water down the drain, collect it in a bucket or a watering can. That's it. You now have a powerful living liquid to activate your compost. Take this rice wash out to your leaf pile and pour it all over the leaves. Try to moisten as many of the leaves as you can. This simple act provides both the moisture and the initial microbial kickstart that the pile desperately needs. You will want to build your leaf pile in layers. Start with a thick layer of dry leaves, perhaps six inches deep. Then douse this layer generously with your rice wash. 
You can also add some green materials at this stage, like kitchen scraps, no meat or dairy, or fresh grass clippings. These green materials provide the nitrogen that the microbes need to feed on as they break down the carbon-rich leaves. Then add another layer of leaves on top and repeat the process. Keep adding layers of leaves, living liquid and green materials until your pile is about a metre high. This layering ensures that the ingredients are well distributed. Don't worry if you don't have enough rice wash to soak the entire pile at once. Just add it whenever you make rice. Every little bit helps. Other fantastic living liquids include the water from rinsing beans or even the water you've used to boil pasta or potatoes, once it has cooled down, of course. These starchy waters are full of life and food for your microbes. The key is to stop seeing this water as waste and start seeing it as a precious resource. It is the magic ingredient that wakes up your dormant leaf pile and gets the composting party started in earnest. To give your leaf pile an even bigger boost, you can introduce more powerful liquids, compost tea and fermented plant juice. Compost tea is like a probiotic drink for your soil and compost pile. It is a liquid filled with a huge diversity of beneficial bacteria and fungi. To make it, you just need a bucket, some water, ideally rainwater, as tap water can have chlorine, and a few handfuls of finished compost or rich garden soil. The compost or soil is already full of the microbes you want to multiply. Think of it as a starter culture much like you would use for making sourdough bread. Making the tea is a simple brewing process. Fill your bucket about three quarters full with water. Place a few generous handfuls of good compost into an old sock or a cloth bag and tie it closed. This is your tea bag. Drop the bag into the bucket of water and let it steep for a day or two. To help the microbes multiply even faster, you can add a spoonful of unsulfured molasses to the water. This is pure sugar, which acts as a food source for the microbes. Stir the mixture a few times a day to add oxygen. After 24 to 48 hours, your water will be a dark, rich brown colour and alive with microorganisms. Another fantastic addition is fermented plant juice, or FPJ. This provides a concentrated shot of nitrogen and enzymes, which really speeds up decomposition. To make it, you gather young, fast-growing green plants or weeds from your garden. Things like comfrey, nettles or even dandelions are perfect. Chop them up roughly and pack them into a jar. For every one part of plant material, add one part brown sugar by weight and mix it well. The sugar draws the liquid and nutrients out of the plant cells through osmosis. Cover the jar with a breathable cloth and leave it in a cool, dark place for about a week. After a week, you will see a dark, sweet-smelling liquid has collected at the bottom of the jar. This is your fermented plant juice. Strain this liquid and store it in a loosely capped bottle in a cool place. To use it, you need to dilute it with water at a ratio of about 1 to 500. That's about a teaspoon of FPJ in a couple of litres of water. You can add this diluted FPJ along with your compost tea to your watering can and apply it to the leaf pile every week or two. This combination provides a constant supply of new microbes, food and nitrogen turning your compost pile into a hotbed of activity. Now that you have added your living liquids, the next crucial step is managing the pile's environment. The goal is to keep it consistently moist, but never waterlogged. A perfect compost pile should feel like a wrung-out sponge. If you take a handful and squeeze it, only a drop or two of water should come out. 
If it's too dry, the microbial activity will slow down or stop completely. If it's too wet, the pile will run out of oxygen, become slimy and start to smell bad. This is because the beneficial aerobic microbes, which need air, will die off and be replaced by anaerobic ones. Keeping the balance is an art that you learn with practice. Check the pile every few days, especially in dry or windy weather. Dig your hand into the centre of the pile. Does it feel dry? If so, it's time to add more water. You can use plain water, or even better, more of your rice wash or diluted compost tea. Use a watering can with a rose attachment to distribute the water evenly. It's better to add a little water often than to flood the pile all at once. If you've had a lot of rain, you might need to protect your pile to prevent it from becoming soaked through. Covering your pile is also a very good idea. A simple tarpaulin or a piece of old carpet laid over the top works wonders. This cover does two important things. Firstly, it locks in the moisture, reducing the need for frequent watering. Secondly, it traps the heat that the microbes generate as they work. You might be surprised to find that the centre of an active compost pile can get quite warm. This heat is a fantastic sign. It means the microbes are happy and working hard, breaking down the leaves at a rapid pace. The cover helps to maintain this warmth, which further accelerates the process. Finally, don't forget to mix or turn the pile. About once a week, use a garden fork to turn the pile over. The goal is to move the material from the outside of the pile into the hotter center and bring the material from the center to the outside. This does several things. It aerates the pile, providing essential oxygen for the microbes. It mixes the ingredients together, ensuring everything breaks down evenly, and it helps to regulate the temperature and moisture. You will see signs of progress as you turn it. Look for white, thread-like structures, which are the mycelium of beneficial fungi doing their part to decompose the tough, woody parts of the leaves. After a few weeks of this care and attention, you will notice a remarkable transformation. The pile will have shrunk in size and the individual leaves will no longer be recognisable. What you are left with is the gardener's true treasure finished compost. It should be dark, almost black in colour, with a rich, crumbly texture. The best sign that it is ready is its smell. It should no longer smell of rotting leaves, but should have a pleasant earthy scent, like a forest floor after it rains. This is the smell of healthy, living soil. This beautiful material is often called black gold, and for very good reason. Once your compost is ready, you can use it everywhere in your garden. It is a perfect soil improver. You can spread a generous layer about an inch or two thick over your vegetable beds and flower borders and gently fork it into the top layer of soil. The compost will improve the soil's structure, help it hold more water and, most importantly, provide a slow release of essential nutrients to your plants. You can also use it as a mulch around established shrubs and trees. This will help to suppress weeds, retain moisture and feed the plant's roots over time. It's a multi-purpose wonder product. This method of making fast compost saves you a surprising amount of money and effort. Think about it. You are no longer spending money on large plastic bags to throw the leaves away. You are not buying bags of expensive compost from the garden centre. You are not purchasing chemical fertilisers to feed your plants. Instead, you are creating a superior living product for free, using resources that are already in your home and garden. It turns a seasonal chore into a productive and rewarding activity. The small amount of time spent making rice wash and turning the pile pays you back many times over. 
But the lesson here goes deeper than just making free plant food. When we compost, we are participating in one of nature's most fundamental cycles. We are taking what is dead and helping to turn it back into life. We are not just getting rid of waste. We are actively feeding the vast and complex web of life in our soil. A healthy soil is full of worms, fungi, and trillions of microbes, and compost is the food that sustains them all. By making and using compost, we become partners with nature, creating a healthier, more resilient, and more beautiful garden from the ground up.